I think I've found a new favorite Briardenverse book. Well, maybe. Hello everyone, and the Sun of the Star has been out for a couple months, and I loved it, if you couldn't tell. On face value, I kinda knew I would just because it's about my favorite character in the universe, and he and his boyfriend are on a personal and very introspective journey rather than a big quest to save the world. And it's similar to one of my already existing favorite books in the universe. And it continues a story thread from said book that I loved about it. But even with all that, it exceeded my expectations. Not just with the journey through Tartarus, but its portrayal of queerness. Not just as a part of the character's story, but woven into the themes of the whole narrative. Now, it's abundantly clear to me why Rick wanted to work with a queer author on this book after so many solo works in this universe, Son of Magic notwithstanding. I'm not familiar with Mark Oshiro's other works, but after reading this book, I'll see if I can work them into my TBR. While others have made their reviews, I'd like to take a closer look at how queerness plays into the story and character arcs. Also, quick disclaimer, I am asexual, somewhere on the aromantic spectrum, as well as possibly some other things that I'm still figuring out. So, while I have experienced many elements of the queer experience, such as worrying about how others will perceive you once your identity is revealed, and the act of coming out of the closet, there are many others that I have not experienced, such as recognizing attraction to people of the same gender or growing up in a homophobic environment. So, you can take what I say with a grain of salt, but I'm still primarily going to discuss how the story speaks to my own queer experience. And if you're a queer fan who has their own experience, feel free to put your thoughts in the comments. With all that said, let's get to the setup. If you've read Trials of Apollo or just seen my other videos on the book, you know that it begins with Nico and Will after they've received a prophecy on top of the cries for help they keep hearing from Tartarus. Now the boys are ready to begin their inevitable descent into one of the worst places in this universe. But not before Nico is plagued with some more tormenting dreams in figuring out how to help Will survive in an area that's actively draining to a child of the Sun God. And that's how the quest starts off. I will eventually cover the book in my Ryardenverse ranking series, but for now, let's get to the main topic. Oh, and a bit of a minor spoiler warning for the book. Nico started off with a lot of tragedy in his life, and part of his character arc is letting himself be happy, and part of that is accepting that he's gay and in love with Will Solace. Though there is a lingering worry that the loss described in the prophecy will be him losing the only source of sunshine in his life. But that isn't enough to deter the boys, nor their optimism that things can get better. Eventually, they make it to the Underworld and Tartarus, but what's most important for our discussion today is all the characters they meet along the way and the personal journeys they must go on in order to understand themselves and each other. There are some familiar faces in the crowd like the Troglodytes, but our boys also meet some queer demons who don't subscribe to silly human conventions like binary genders or heterosexuality, though they are nonetheless aware of such conventions and take issue with people judging them for their identities. In fact, one demon asks Nico if he has a problem with him being in a relationship with another male, before Nico tells him that he's also gay and has come to the underworld with his boyfriend. Apparently, even in the underworld, straight is still the default assumption until stated otherwise. A mistake many people, even LGBTQ people and allies, including myself admittedly, have made our time a two. And that's not all. There's also greater examination of Nico and Will's relationship, how it started and how it's going. Nico knew he had a crush on Will after the events of Blood of Olympus, so he planned a coming out and a confession. That ended up being a bit more extravagant than he planned. It worked, though, and it got him the relationship he desired. But it apparently worked even better than he thought, as it prompted other characters like Piper and Reyna to make their own way regardless of what was expected of them. This must have been what made Rick want to work with a queer author on this book. It is, by my knowledge and experience, a pretty apt portrayal of the queer experience and how one must navigate it. It's tough to come out, even if you're positive you'll be safe, and you might just start something you didn't expect. I'm willing to bet these additions to the book were written by Mark Oshiro, or at least added by their advice. It gave me a story that I, and hopefully other queer fans, could heavily relate to, and maybe offered a bit of insight into our lives for cis-het fans. But even that isn't the end of the story. We still need to touch upon the antagonist. The villain for this book is the primordial goddess of night and darkness, Nyx. She's the one who has been keeping Bob confined and lured Nico into the Tartarus via the nightmares he was having. She's also the mother of monsters and demons, and as a creator, she has a specific way she wants things to be, especially her children. And she's willing to threaten, torture, force, and whatever else to bend those she deems beneath her to her image of what she believes them to truly be. 
which tends to be hateful, miserable, and rage-driven, or in a word, dark. Overt metaphor for an ignorant society that wants to force people into boxes by any means necessary? Yeah, spoilers for a future video, but I'm not the biggest fan of how overt the message at the end of the book is. It's just a bit too in your face for my taste. But for the most part, I love it. It fits thematically, and it rewards Nico and other characters, like Bob and the demons, for defying Nyx. Nico is a son of Hades who overcame his grudges and found happiness. Will is a healer who is capable of seriously hurting those who would threaten him or his loved ones. And Bob is a titan who isn't very violent and has befriended demigods. Recognizing this is what empowers them to escape Tartarus and Nyx. All things considered, the book has a good message about being your own person regardless of expectations. You will never be free or happy if you just conform. But it's never too late to be yourself. So yeah, I loved this book, not just as a fan of the world and its characters, but as a queer person. I felt so seen by it, more so than I already did from other books and characters from the universe, even characters like Reyna, whose story I heavily related to as an ace person. That said, while I have my criticisms and I don't think it's quite my favorite Briarden verse book, it's still among the top three. But that's just my perspective. And now I'd like to hear yours, whether you're queer or not. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all next time.